Today's changemaker is an award-winning designer with a thriving business, but it wasn't always that way for Felicia Gimza. After spending years in the financial services industry, she decided one day that she had just had enough. She was going to build the life she wanted to live, even without a plan. So armed with some courage, tenacity, a paintbrush, and then some really cool design ideas, she opened up the Expert Touch Interiors. Today, you're gonna to hear some of her designer secrets, as well as some great advice on how to avoid some of those decorating disasters that we've all known or experienced, um, as well as ways to bring light into your own personal space. This is her story. Welcome to Sippin' On Story, where we take you into the lives of diverse and unique change makers who turn anxiety, fear, and passion into powerful recipes for success. Good stories build insightful connections, but great stories. Now, that's something special. Today's story is one of those stories. Hi, my name is Rose McInerney. Welcome back to another great episode of Sipping on Stories. Today, we are in the lounge with Felicia Gimza. She is a designer extraordinaire, and she is the owner of the Expert Touch Interiors. We're going to meet Felicia today. Before we step into the lounge, we've got two orders of business. The first is, of course, take that little finger of yours, and I want you to touch that subscribe button, please. If you like what you hear in these diverse episodes of Sipping on Stories, I'd love you to follow them and to, to just be with us from week to week. Head on over to SippingOnStories.com as well, and you'll be able to see some links to the guests that we feature, their websites, uh, links to our YouTube videos as well. So those of you that love to sit back and just kind of hear us talk and see, you know, put some faces behind uh, the voices, um, you know, hit that subscribe button as well. And of course, you can follow us on social media. So today we are going to sip on yet again, something healthy. Um, I keep saying to the team at Sipping on Stories, we need to start doing some night taping. So if you're listening to this at night, you do not need to be sipping on all of this healthy stuff. I know it's all good. I'm not knocking it. I'm trying really hard. Um, but today we are going to be sipping on something healthy again. I just know it. Felicia is super healthy. Uh, she has that decorator's attention to detail. You'll hear that in all of her great decorating advice, um, as well as just her lifestyle and the way that she lives. Um, so she's gonna be sipping on something super healthy. I just know it. Um, I myself have some green tea. It's not hot tea today, so I guess I've changed it up a little bit. It's actually pretty good. Um, so a cheers to this. Um, a quick shout out before we head into the lounge as well to womanscape.com. I forgot all about them. They are the reason we are here. They are sponsoring us with their living library of change makers. It really matters, folks. We know this. Uh, to stay inspired every single day is hard. It's hard. Everyone's got a lot of baggage, right? Um, forget the words pandemic or any of that stuff in regular life we just got a lot of stuff going on so to be happy to wake up happy every day sometimes it helps to hear other stories of people the challenges they've had and how they've overcome it so that's a long way of getting into um, Felicia's story today because she's got a really good whopper of a story for you I can't wait for you to hear it so without any further ado we're gonna hop into the lounge and uh, let's say hello to Felicia Hello, Felicia. I'm so excited about welcoming you into our Sipping on Story Lounge. How are you? I'm great, Rose. Thank you so much for, for inviting me in today. I'm so excited about this. As you know, I've been following all of your Sipping on Stories uh, podcast so far. So this is a, a wonderful opportunity. Thank you. Oh, thanks. That's a great intro. Thank you for that little freebie plug. <laughs> um, honestly, um, <laughs> But, you know, this is, you know, and I always say this, this is just really a chance to um, get together and to chat with uh, women and men that I think are doing amazing things. Um, most of us will look at ourselves and think what we do is very ordinary, but um, we're all extraordinary. So I can't wait to share your story and, and have you share a little bit about what it is that you 
do for a living? Um, because you are a change maker, my friend. Um, can you tell, can you share with our audience a little <laughs> bit about um, what you know, the name of your company and what type of work it is that you do? Sure, I'd love to. I am an interior designer. I've been in business now since 2002, so just over 18 years. Wow. Um, the name of my company is The Expert Touch Interiors. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a funny story. I can quickly tell you why I named it the Expert Touch Interiors because 18 years ago, there was this thing out called faux finishing. And um, I really got into uh, to business just starting off doing faux finishing color consults before I really right. went back to school and uh, for interior design. So at the time, the Expert Touch sounded like an appropriate name. And then I added the interiors onto it after um, yeah. I started doing full rooms and full decor. Right. But right. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where that name came from. I did not know and that. Stuck. Ah. Well, yeah. um, there are so many stories we can share about your beginning. So we're going to get into that. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd love for you to share. You've got some wonderful accolades about how this business has grown over the 18 years. Um, you know, you started in a, in a very select way, just finishing walls and then moving into further and further into the interior and designing. And so kid, I, I, have you been designer of the year in your community there, the larger, oh, I Oh, that's sweet. It's actually not designer of the year, but I have won all sorts of house awards, home stars awards. And then I, for the last three years, I've won top three rated in my area so you know it's uh, a, a company out here i don't know if they've got it in the us but in canada okay. um there's a company that rates the top three um designers and restaurants right. etc um right. in their area so yeah i've won that three years in a row now so okay so you got to be good <laughs> yes and and the other thing too is i, I mean so well, it's all about the customer, especially when it comes to home design and, and what we want to surround ourselves with, isn't it? Because um, I think you have a very hard job. You've got to go in and figure out what it is that the customer wants, even when they don't know, right? That is very true. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's, it's uh, a bit of a process, yeah. but the more I work with people, the more I understand what they're looking for. And um Right. It's definitely a two-way street. A lot of communication needs to be involved, for sure. Right, right. Okay. Well, let's let's start yeah. with that word communication because um, I, I I haven't shared with our listeners. So we met, um, you know, we met a little while back uh, before you started your business. But there's a story. Can I tell the story, the Bridget Jones, a little bit, or just intro, sure. and you could you could tell <laughs> yeah. how it it fell out. Um, for I, sure. Um, so Felicia and I do go back a little ways and I call her my Bridget Jones. And the reason I do is because, and I'm dating myself completely by, by, you know, touching on that movie. But, um, what I love about you is you had the audacity to start to build this new life for yourself and it all happened one afternoon and you didn't even know it was going to happen. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. So, okay. So you gotta, you have to share this because to me, this is that, bottom challenge thing that we've all had and we can go one of a couple of ways with this right um so could, do you mind sharing a little yeah. bit about what what happened that sure. afternoon that changed your life sure. i'll <laughs> give you the cole's notes version okay um, i had been for a long time i hadn't been happy in my uh, in my career i was um working for a major canadian bank in the insurance um area mm -hmm. um i had a pretty high up position and um but the company was going through a whole bunch of issues and my um my job was redundant at the time right. so uh you know it was kind of like i would walk around for for months just asking people <laughs> to help them do work and they nothing was happening it was just it was you know in the bank if you don't um if you've never worked for a bank before, it's mm -hmm. very political and very legal. And I, I just had, I was tired of it. So I actually tried to quit properly twice <laughs> before this within a three month span. I actually had a physical letter of resignation, okay. but they wouldn't accept it. And they kept saying, oh, don't worry, you know, things will get better. So 
that's the background. Um, I, it was in my performance review that uh, my boss's boss um, was in with me and he, he kept wanting me to go back to school for, it was just like a, yeah. I, I had already taken all of these courses in insurance and I kept trying yeah. to um, just, better myself or whatever. Yeah. I had two yeah. young kids at home too. So I, I just had enough, I honestly, yeah. but it was just that tipping point. I had enough. And he right. said, so Felicia, where do we go from here? And something in my head made me say, you know what? Nowhere. Yeah. And I picked up out of the <laughs> room went to my desk, packed up all my personal belongings, and I left. Yeah. Yeah. And they gave me the, the weekend to think about it, and I, I gave it a lot of thought, and even yeah. though at the time I was, you know, mm -hmm. I was making half of our income, right. um, I decided that was it. And yeah. Um, yeah. within two weeks, I followed my dream and started my own company in interior decorating and design yeah. <laughs> without any formal training. Right. Um, so that it was kind yeah. of crazy. It was just one of these, I, I guess you could call it a fed up moment. I was yeah. fed up with the corporate world yeah. and I was fed up with um, that particular company. Okay. And wow. my boss's boss was yep. the nicest person. Well, I, and, he won't be <laughs> well, and even if he is, I mean, we all go through things and we have jobs and sometimes in our jobs, we have to do what we don't really enjoy doing or want to do. Uh, but to your point, you, you actually did something about it. And anyone that's listening out there, that's in a, a job where they feel like they've done everything they could, it's just not appealing anymore. And you heard Felicia, I mean, you have two young kids at the time, your, your salary was important. It wasn't like you could just up and quit. Um, so this was huge. You took a massive leap of faith and you, there's nothing like being in that, that role, right? Where you just got to make it happen. And you did, and you did. So, um, hooray, hooray, hooray. And this is the time for me <laughs> to introduce what it is we're drinking because I forgot always when we get in the shed, in this oh. lounge, this, we share what it is we're sipping on. And, you know, I'm lamenting this. I'm complaining actually almost every single episode that I'm drinking darn tea and coffee that I've got to start taping at <laughs> night because, um, but, but, you know, it's also making me healthy. So what are you sipping on today, Felicia? <laughs> well, you know, I am a big tea totaler, as you know. So I've yes. got my vanilla chai decaf because I can't do caffeine. So oh, okay. this is my normal everyday uh, uh, drink uh, okay. of choice anyway. Yeah. Uh, well, it looks great. I'm going to raise my glass to toast you with my green tea. I've got a nice organic green tea. So oh. Sort of looks, cheers. it's cheers. Okay. So I'm yeah. going to cheers to my Bridget Jones, my Felicia Gimza story um, <laughs> of empowerment. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, you, oh, you're so welcome. So, so let's get in. I know that a lot of people um, may be listening because the idea of having a decorator and some advice is also something that's um, always compelling. So I'm sure you're, you're asked all the time for this. Um, you know, um, what is it um, about decorating and, and working for other people and having clients, you know, what is it about this experience of, of filling their homes with, you know, really beauty and something that feels good? What, what, do, what is it that you enjoy most about your job? You know what, I would say that it, it's, it's fulfilling people's needs, it's making people happy, um, mm -hmm. seeing people smiling faces when I've completed a project. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, especially now, <laughs> during yeah. this pandemic, um, mm -hmm. our homes are important to us. Um, anybody yeah. that, you know, whether you're in a, a small condo or in a 10,000 square foot home, it's still home. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, especially I, I find when people um, either move into a new place, they, it doesn't feel like home yet. Sure. Um, so I really try and um, I'm very passionate about, uh, passionate about what I do. Mm -hmm. I love what I do. And that comes yeah. through in yeah. my consultations. So um, nice. I think it just, it, just making people happy and, and not only creating a warm and cohesive space, but really a functional yeah. space. Um, yeah. Sometimes in smaller spaces, people, you know, they, they, yes. it, it doesn't make sense for them. So 
you know, the, the number one thing that I look at when I'm designing a space is uh, function, you That's know, great. and ensuring that the room is functional. Okay. And then, um, you know, and then the pretty stuff comes on top of that. Well, that makes sense. I mean, I know that if you're sitting in a room and you don't have enough task lighting, if it's an office um, and you can't see the work yeah. that you're doing, you may feel really good and it looks beautiful, but you can't get anything done. <laughs> right? That is so true. You know? And a lot of people right now are using their, their home offices um, for right. sure, right? I don't know what the percentage is, but I yeah. would say it's pretty high. high. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the number one thing. Good, good Rose, um, is to make sure that you've got proper task lighting, not just yeah. ambient lighting. Right, right. So, and yeah, if, if you so, no, go ahead. Yeah, no. Well, I was going to say, are you doing a lot of offices? Are you getting asked or tapped to to do that right now? I'm I'm guessing yes. Actually, I haven't. Um, but I huh. I have had a huge amount of people wanting to redecorate and um, okay, you know, make their spaces spaces warmer. I think, you know, people mm -hmm. are seeing what's coming up this winter. Um, I've just, since COVID, I've put in eight furniture orders. This is like since June, which is pretty crazy because wow. sometimes that's, you know, all I might do in a year. So this is just in four months, um, you know, and then I've probably had 40 or 50 consultations on top of that, just for people, you okay. know, calling me in for colors, advice. beautifying their space. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Advice. What, what can they do to Okay. To make it more functional. Yeah, but no, it's funny you ask what the office is. I thought yeah. that that would be something I'd be called for, um, but not yet. No. I, I do see a lot of people, though, working from home and, you know, maybe perhaps yeah. using a dining room or a kitchen space or a bedroom, sure. converted sure. bedroom. Yeah. Okay. Well, but, maybe you know, next year that may, may change. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it, it makes yeah. sense too, yeah, maybe people sure. are spending so much time in their offices that they want when they get out of there to to make sure that it feels like a place of respite and you know it's relaxing and you know more than functional they're just absolutely they flop down and enjoy it yeah okay yeah, oh very cool for sure very very cool so business is good then that's what i heard there too yeah business is good <laughs> i'll take it while i can right now <laughs> yeah yeah who knows what's gonna happen again i don't know if we're going on lockdown again who knows but right now i'll take it Right. Uh, when I can, and I'm, you know, practicing, yeah. obviously, wearing masks in people's homes, and they do sure. the same. Okay. Social okay. distance. Yeah, yeah. So far, okay. Far. Yeah. And, and I heard you also, um, you know, many people probably don't know this. I've been lucky enough to work with you on home projects before. Thanks. So, and they've all turned out and smashing, likewise. smashingly. Yeah, so, so beautiful. Um, but people don't realize you don't have to go full throttle with a decorator or a designer either, do you? Um, there are levels of um, ways, I guess, or projects. Yeah, absolutely, Rose. That's a very good yeah. point because I think some people get a little bit worried. They think, okay, well, if yeah. I hire an interior decorator, that means I'm going to be spending a certain <laughs> amount of money and, you know, I don't know if I have that budget, but... I yeah. offer a uh, thing anywhere from two hour consultations, just to sort of as a starting point uh, okay. to answer questions. People, there are a lot of do it yourselfers out there that just want my advice right. um, to full fledged decorating and design renovation. Right. Um, right. You know, I can do your entire house for you if you want. It might take a little mm -hmm. while because I'm a one man show. Yes. <laughs> I sub trade things out. I have uh, yes. some subcontractors that I, I, I you know, that, oh, that works for me. Right. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I do think people, mm. it's a misnomer that decorators or designers are expensive. It really, right. I really will work within my client's yes. budget. Yes. Well, and I know just personally, if, you know, you get discounts on some of the bigger ticket items as well that more than pay for, you know, having an expert to work with. And I don't know, that's a great plug. That that sold me at the very beginning, regardless of needing the advice and the, the help. It was the fact that it could kind of pay for itself. Yeah, yeah. absolutely, Rose. You know, um, I say that to my clients all the time. If they 
you know, it, really my consultation fees um, are one thing, but it, with the discounts that I offer, it really does help pay for those consultation fees. Yeah. And, you know, it, it helps, <laughs> it helps Sure. A lot of people just make a lot of mistakes um, doing things on their own, unfortunately. Yes. And, uh, right. That's, that's I'm, I, that was costly. the next one. <laughs> yeah, so that's the next one. Like, you know, and I'm sure you've got a lot of horror stories too, or people that are calling you in, in the middle of a mess, like just a, a, a meltdown, a real mess. Um, yes. and can you think of one that was particularly bad where you really had to just, and did you go in and save the day or did you just say, okay, this is too big a mess, you know, any bad experiences? Yes, actually. Yeah. Last year, just last summer, I did have a client come in uh, and call me. Um, she had been working with another designer. Okay. And um, I don't know really what the issue was, to be honest, but she wasn't happy with the outcome. Okay. Um, she was working with a designer and then the designer's contractor. And she was just, when she, by the time she called me in, things were maybe three quarters of the way finished. Oh. But I walked into a very gray, drab, blah space. Oh. Uh, okay. You know, and she was, um, yeah, she was very upset. But it wasn't just that. It wasn't just the colors and the fact that there was no character mm -hmm. behind any of the furniture or furnishings that had already started. Um, oh. But she she wanted color and I, I think it was probably a miscommunication between herself and the designer at the beginning mm -hmm. so that's why I always say it's so important to communicate always yeah. and along the way at the beginning during you know yes um so I, I think that was part of it plus unfortunately the contractor was not the best and uh, a lot of mistakes were made so she was really quite angry so mm -hmm. I think I spent I can't remember how many hours. It was definitely a few months. Okay. And um, in the end, she was a very happy camper. We nice. We prettied everything up. I, I put in lots of color, lots of texture. Okay. Um, fixed okay. all the design issues, changed a lot of colors, you know, uh, and between everything yeah. got finished off. And yeah. So okay. in the end, she, she was very happy. happy. And she actually, after that, asked me to, work on her office as oh, well. Nice. So Okay. Okay. Well, so yeah. hard, hard yeah. lessons, but I think there's a couple of good things in there that when you hire a really good designer, you're also bringing on their tried and true craftspeople too, aren't you? And that's, that's, that's very true. It, it is so true Rose, because everybody yeah. that I recommend, and I have a whole slew of trades, people that I, that I work with sure. and that I recommend, um, you know, it, my, my name is on the line. So I make sure that everybody I, uh, refer, I've yeah. you're, interviewed, you're I've, you know, checked yeah. their, yeah, yeah. I, that box. Yeah. yeah that's, they, that's gotta good. Be, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, so, yeah. so where, where are you? comes back to haunt you. Well, this is it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I prefer not to make the expensive mistakes, but I don't think it does have to be expensive. You can do small little changes. Can't you, there are things you can do to immediately spark something of creativity and, and bringing that in. So, so I got to ask you where, where do, where do you think Absolutely. your creativity comes? Where, where do you get it? Where do you get all this, all your ideas and your creativity and the colors and Oh my gosh, that's a good question. I I yeah. don't even know, to be honest. I, I, probably from my dad's side of the family. There's a whole <laughs> list of entrepreneurs on okay. my dad's side of the family. I okay. think that's probably where it came from. And I didn't realize that growing up, I was so creative. I used to, you know, when everyone was out meeting boys, I used to sit in my room and draw and sketch yeah. things. Okay. And uh, that whole artistic, uh, mm -hmm. you know, ability has come back again now. I, I I did finally get on the boy bandwagon and then <laughs> met my husband, had a family, forgot all about art. And uh, just recently I've taken uh, art up again. And I, I just nice. love it. I just yeah. have it in my jeans somewhere. Yeah. And uh, definitely lots of entrepreneurs in my family too. We've had, we've had all, all lots of family yes. owned businesses. And yeah. so probably that side of me, again, I didn't even know it existed. I really thought oh. I was a true corporate girl yeah. all the way yeah so wow it was, thank it was thank so god weird how it all happened yeah thank god you <laughs> left that insurance company <laughs> yeah well and how true is it i think so many of us are in denial about art and just about colors or seeing us 
possibly in a field, you know, a, a career choice that is something that, you know, I, maybe sometimes society doesn't push that to somehow we're more successful if we're working in a corporate structure and we've, we've got a ladder to climb. I don't know. I don't know. I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. Because my parents certainly never said, Felicia, you know, you're creative. Why aren't you taking, <laughs> you know, art, in school? Or, you know, why aren't you? Yeah taking yeah. interior decorator or in art in school like i was never pushed uh or or no you know, nobody ever sort of encouraged said, you explore that thank you that's sort of like yeah. explore that stuff yeah. thank you yeah. it was you know my parents were always in business and that was i guess where i was supposed to to fall mm -hmm. but I, I tell you if you this is very funny um when I first got into the corporate world, the only reason I even got into the insurance industry was because okay. I liked the building that the, oh. <laughs> the company was in. Seriously? Was really cool. It was called the Atrium on Bay. And I, I thought, this is so cool that people can work up here and then shop down there. Oh. And um, <laughs> I, that was the reason I joined the company, if you can believe it. And then I stayed wow. in insurance for 15 years. Wow. So, um, <laughs> okay. So <laughs> you could have been, you could have been an architect. Maybe that was, yeah, I, I do think it's really <laughs> interesting. <laughs> it really is. It's so interesting how we're sort of channels. Yeah. And as parents, we have to remember yeah. that, don't we, with our kids that there's, you know, there tends to be this repeating pattern. I think sometimes our expectations for each other. Um, yeah. That uh, is you so know. true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About security. Yeah right? What's secure. Um, and yet look exactly. at you, you're doing far. I mean, <laughs> I, I know Felicia, people line up for months to be able to see you. It's, um, you know, so I'm so happy <laughs> that you can meld the happiness, your own personal happiness with doing something really that gives back to people in a really meaningful way. Because you said no one afternoon, you it's that afternoon was a game changer for you. Yeah. <laughs> I came home and cried, uh, you know, pretty much all weekend about it, thinking, what did I just do? In fact, my husband actually thought I was kidding, too, when I told him I quit. Yeah. But um, it's funny, you know, I've never looked back. Yeah, I, I've right. never looked back. And I do also thank the corporate world for everything that I learned, because mm -hmm. I learned a lot about managing people, um, you know, and finances and and mm -hmm. marketing and all of those great things that I learned from the corporate world, True. I have taken with me to my own business. So yeah, yeah that's good. That's yeah. good. And that's so everything, I think everything happens for a reason and mm -hmm. everything in life is a stepping stone too. So I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm thankful for the years I had in the corporate world. Yeah. Honestly, and, you, uh, you're right. You said it best. And I think that's what I hear that, Every change maker, anyone that's, you know, totally transformed their life always says this. They don't look back with regret. You, you see just what you've done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The positive. Absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah, that's very so, true. So we're in this busy, crazy time. Um, we've never seen a pandem pandemic. Our, our generation hasn't. Um, moms and dads are struggling with, I'm, with what I'm calling the COVID conundrums. Um, this <laughs> is this idea that you've got an office that's at home and how do you create that division, um, and have both, both places be restful, um, to help you to do what it is you need to do in those spaces. Um, do you have yeah. some tips for people? Are there, um, you know, words of wisdom from Felicia from the expert touch interiors? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I would say, I would say that, you know, you, you've got to be really organized because if you are using something like a converted dining room or a bedroom, or, uh, you know, if you, if you're not, if you don't have a home office, yeah. um, or even part of a kitchen, you've got to make yourself organized or otherwise you're not going to be able to do your job properly. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned it before or earlier too, I was going to say, you know, the lighting has to be proper. So if you're in a, a bedroom that has maybe just a flush mount fixture or something from before, perhaps you need to change that light fixture out, put something in that's right. got mm -hmm. a lot more lighting uh, in it for you. And then add a desk lamp 
um, for sure. So that's one thing. Um, a lot of times, though, you know, these these children, people have young children at home. Yeah. So if you can kind of involve your children somehow in your work space, but ah. not not <laughs> perhaps like a set up a little uh, area for them. Okay. In your office or your bedroom or whatever, and let them feel like they're part of your day. So, um, you know, this is for the real young ones too, you know? Um, so just like a, a little area where they can do their own little activities and feel like maybe they're helping mom or dad, uh, do their work. So right. really being organized, um, you know, you don't want all of their toys, obviously all of your office kind of things. Mm -hmm. So if you can just yeah. yes. keep those separate the space. Uh, yeah. yeah, use bins, use uh, use baskets, use, um, you know, I love, I'm a big fan of see-through bins. Um, I'm a big fan okay. of labeling, mm -hmm. you know, the more organized you can be, right. The calmer you're going to feel. True. Um, so, you know, that's, yeah. that's one thing, but also, so that would be like in your office space, but in your living mm -hmm. space, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Danish term, um, Huga. It's actually, I have. Yes. Have you? okay, so it's, it's, it's spelled Higgy, H-Y-G-G-E, -G -E, yeah. so you'd mm -hmm. think it would be pronounced Higgy, but it's Huka. Yeah, so it's all about, um, you know, the Danes, apparently, according to whatever um, surveys there, they are, there are out there about <laughs> happy people, the Danes are one of the happiest people, yeah. and they say that, um, you know, Huka is all about making your environment comfortable and cozy. So, yeah, you know, if you think of so things, things, yeah, that you can do to your living space and mm -hmm. involve your children in that too, you know, yeah. yeah, lots of pillows, throws, wool blankets, especially mm -hmm. with winter that we've got coming up, coming. Um, especially mm -hmm. in the northern part of the U.S. and Canada, right? Yes, um, yes. You know, fires, obviously, if you don't have a fireplace, there's electric fireplaces there are True. so many things that you can do to warm up right. your space to warm it up okay um i like this yeah. yeah so lighting you know as i say lighting is a big thing um lots of hygge even sticking being organized and then sticking to more neutral color schemes too but believe it or not the more monochromatic you can be in your space the calmer it is mm. um for you agreed you know when you've got a ton of color around believe it yes. or not, it, yes. color plays a lot, a, a large part of how we feel. Yes. You, you might know that a red, yeah, red, yes. a red room mm -hmm. actually can create anger. Um, oh, a yellow room can create excitement. So. Wow. So if you have <laughs> a red a room, if you have a red room right now and a, a brood of kids and you're trying to get some work done, it's time to paint over that red. Um, okay. Exactly. You. Or you know, if you're trying to get yeah. your baby to sleep, don't paint their room yellow because that yes. won't work. So yeah, calm environment, calm colors. Yeah. Lots yeah. of textures, lots of warmth and so, so yeah, use all yeah, these are... things at our disposal, really. I mean, those are, it doesn't take a lot to be able to do that. I've, you know, I've managed to paint many mm -hmm. a wall in my day. Um, it doesn't <laughs> have to, but, you know, maybe to enlist the support of, of someone that does know and can give advice so that you also don't feel like your, your home is, you know, all these different colors all over the place. You do want to have some sort of a connection to rooms, you know, that make you, absolutely you feel the continuity in it. Yeah, um, and a nice cohesive, a nice cohesive right. flow to your home. Okay, will will just help you feel wow. calmer, and your children probably too. Yes. <laughs> so you have to go. <laughs> we could all use a little bit of calm these days. Uh, well, I think so, and that's really the idea behind it. How do we? I love your idea. I don't. I don't think a typical um, designer would talk about incorporating children into an office space. So the fact that you recognize the function that, you know, the reality of it, that, you know, kids are running in and out. And if they have a spot to go to where there is maybe a quiet exercise, a set of table and chairs or something simple yeah. with coloring, they can feel like they're next to mom or dad and still be part of the environment without, you know, yelling for whatever it is that they need or want. Um, Absolutely. That's smart. 
this is this is one thing I've found in working with you, Felicia. You do think outside of the box. You're certainly not typical, and um, I love the pragmatist um, in you. Yeah, thank you, Rose. Yeah, thank I really you. do. Yeah, that was that was definitely the first thing I learned in decorating 101 yes. 18 years ago was to make sure your room was functional, and um, yeah, a lot of people forget about that part. So mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Um, go, okay. That's my number one tip. I, I love that. People can take that. And, <laughs> and I know if they go and take a look at your website, it's the expert touch interiors.com. They can see yes. examples of your work and the color palettes that you have, you know, put together for people. So, you know, starting with some mm -hmm. in inspiration there. Um, I also know we're heading into the holidays soon. Um, any advice on preparing for the holidays? Let's say, you know, you don't want to do an awful lot or how do, how do you, you know, advice again, are there some nice tips that are easy, simple things to do that can really brighten the space or make you feel festive without going crazy? Mm -hmm. even? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, for me, I'm going to use that word again. I, I, it's all about being organized. So uh, okay. I start about six, six weeks before Christmas. We're, we're lucky here in Canada that our Thanksgiving is at the beginning of October. So yes. I know it's a little bit different because you're still in the U.S. You're still dealing with Thanksgiving yeah. at about is it four weeks before Christmas. Yeah, it's, it's, if like that, that, it's right? maybe four weeks, the very end, it's always around the 26th of November or so. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, anyway, well, here for, for me here, I, I really do start thinking about Christmas about six weeks in advance. So I start gathering um, my, you know, outdoor greenery and that kind of thing about six weeks before and five weeks okay. before I start the outdoor decorating. Um, that's what, usually an entire wow. day to two days. Okay. Um, you know, with, with the greenery, you know, you, you decorate your porch, your urns, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, mm -hmm. Every year I change it up, I make it a different theme. So okay. I try and I obviously have to get rid of my greenery, but I keep I keep some of the filler. Um, okay. The, the, you know, the pot decorative I things. I decide it's going to be one year, it's a rustic theme. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I keep that from year to year. Um, Dave has, my husband has thrown a few of those out over the years, so I've had to replenish. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so. That's an entire, and then, and then of course I embellish with lights because to me, little white lights, Christmas without little white lights is just not Christmas. Okay. Um, and then about three weeks before or four weeks before, sorry, four weeks yes. before, that's when I actually start decorating the inside. Okay. Um, and again, so, you know, some years I do more mm -hmm. and other days, years I, I do a little less. I try and change okay. it up again every year. Okay. Um, I, I sort of, because I move a lot too. So. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, I know you've been known to do that. Yes. She yeah. gets tired of decorating so, a space and buys a new home for it. So that's always a great <laughs> change up. <laughs> exactly. I just get bored. Okay, time to buy a new... Yeah, no, uh, no but, uh, we're teasing. Yeah, we're teasing. So one year I have a big fireplace and the next year I'll have a linear fireplace and it has no mantle. I'm like, okay, what do I do with all of this? stuff I had from my fireplace, my previous home's fireplace. Right. So I still find, a, I still find spots for it. You know, it's, it's sure. fun. Yeah. Yeah. Every year redecorating. Okay. Uh, no rules. You really should. If, Sorry, no, no rules. Well, I was, there's one rule I, I do try and stick with and is um, you should try and be consistent. So your Christmas tree should have consistent colors. Yeah, okay. Uh, cohesive colors throughout your home. Um, okay. The room that your Christmas tree is in, that should sort of mimic what the rest of the decor is going to be in that room. You know, as okay. they say, it could be a mantle, it could be shelves, it could be a table. So if you're decorating in, say, turquoise and gold that year on your tree, mm -hmm. you try and pull in the turquoise and gold everywhere else. Okay. Um, you know, okay. I'm a big fan, again, of using. Um, bowls if yeah. you bowls with um balls <laughs> bowls and balls. <laughs> balls and balls i actually have a picture on i'm on house.com uh, most okay. i'm sure most of you guys have heard of that yes um, there's one a, a bunch of my christmas decorating on there yes i think one of my pictures has been shared 
shared over like I a guess, million times, whatever they do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a simple silver bowl with mm -hmm. silver ornaments and some greenery in it. And yeah. I can't tell you how many times um, that has been, um, you know, yeah. put in ideas, people's idea books, because uh, right. it's simple mm -hmm. um, and it, it's timeless and it's classic yes. and you can put that bowl pretty much anywhere. Yeah. Um, but also yeah. I do like to pull in the outdoors uh, right. in, in as well. I outside. always have. So pulling in fresh greenery from outside. Yeah. Some cedar. Yeah. Cedar lasts longer than pine. So if you can pull in some cedar and you cedar. give it a spritz once a week just to keep it live and yeah. not dry. Yeah. Um, that helps nice. too. Nice. I, I, I like this advice because I think bringing the outside in, that's the origins behind, you know, um, Christmas trees anyway in the Christian yeah. faith. Um, mm -hmm. But obviously, holidays aren't just Christmas. They are Kwanzaa. There's all these different um, celebrations. And I think your advice sounds like it translates across that you're just finding some simple ways to bring in a festive spirit colors. You don't need a fancy fireplace. You can do it on your bookshelves. You can do it in uh, little ways mm -hmm. to decorate around the house. And I also love that it's easy cleanup when I listen to how you're, <laughs> because I don't, I don't know when, when my kids were really little, I went to town and cleaning up was the hardest part and the bins and all the, so yes. this is much more fitting, I think, for maybe where we are in the world and wanting to simplify and find joy in, in, um, yeah that, that beauty of, of simplicity. Um, so, so Absolutely. yeah. Uh, so big projects ahead or what's next for you or do you have any, any plans to change up what you're doing? Are you going to, do you see yourself decorating for years to come? Um, that's a really good question. Um, I yeah. had always said that on my 20th anniversary, it was going to be time to retire. Well, I'm a year and a half away from that now. And yeah. I had a little bit of taste during uh, the beginning of the pandemic where I didn't work for about a month or so. Thank right. you, by the way, you did keep me busy for a good oh, month, gosh. I would say on your project. Um, <laughs> so that was great. But then after that, I, I took about a month off and I realized I would be really bored. I don't think yeah. it's time to retire yet. So I'm going to continue this for at least, I would say another five years and then nice. we'll see. Um, I'm just really, you know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm winding down a little bit in that I'm, mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying not to travel as far as I used to. So I, I try and okay. stick a little yes. bit more local projects mm -hmm. and I'm a little, a little bit more choosy and uh, picky uh, on yes. you know what projects I take on and right. that's that's nice that I'm able to do that that is um, but yeah I, I've got to get all these eight furniture orders and I hope uh, they all come in before Christmas uh, There's a lot of crazy things going on right now uh, with yeah. manufacturers a lot of back orders and uh, yeah. price increases and and that kind right. of thing a lot of the manufacturers shut down for a long time so They're struggling I'm sure people the companies are struggling yeah um, they are they are Wow. So we've been waiting. Yeah. So <laughs> quite a while for things, but yeah, but you know what I love, um, you know, you're keeping industry going too. That's the flip side. So anyone that has a little bit of extra money that I, I love this too, that if you do have something and you've, it's a project you've wanted to start, maybe now is the time and you're going to help other people in other industries to keep their jobs and yeah. Do, the, so every true. every small bit right it makes a difference so absolutely it's all, it's all yeah a, so you're saving when you're supporting small businesses too you know you, yes. feel, you feel a bit good about it so yes very true wow well thanks for for coming on today felicia uh oh, oh, I, thank you truly totally my pleasure uh well it's wonderful to have you in the lounge i know that this is going to be a very popular episode uh, we'll make sure to to share all the reach outs, um, you know, so that people can connect with you on our website um, through sippingonstories.com. Yeah. And, um, and maybe we'll even throw up in social media a few pictures of some of the amazing stuff you've done for me on a personal level. Um, oh, yeah, oh. there's been some great, really? we've got some great stories in there. There's always stories in all the 
the projects and the little the little things that are big things in our life. So um, just a thank you to you on, on so many levels and uh, look forward to talking thank to you, you again. Maybe we'll have you on for a part two and we'll tackle some other designing uh, project. <laughs> before you get your own show anytime (laughs) (laughs) anytime it would be totally my pleasure i really enjoyed this chat today rose so nice to be able to pin you down for a real cup of tea together (laughs) thank you well cheers my friend have a good one today again okay thanks Thanks. okay take care Uh, bye-bye bye-bye rose bye all right that was such a pleasant pleasant episode um you know, we feature on Sipping on Stories all kinds of episodes with um, harrowing stories, massive change. Um, Felicia's story about becoming a designer is such an interesting one. A, because we all have to find out how to live well in our own spaces, what makes us happy. Um, you heard from her today that it's just simple, simple little things um, that you can do. It doesn't have to be a lot of money, a lot of outlay or fancy, um, but the takeaways are many with Felicia. And the first one is um, consider, really take the time today to, to step back and, and, and look at how happy you are in the job that you're in. Um, we're all really lucky to have an income, so I'm not suggesting you jump ship right right now. But there are ways for you to start to explore the creative side or other things that you're interested in. And that can re-energize you um, from the inside out. Great design advice. Um, As we head into the holidays, little things that you can do with just simple white lights, um, decorating bits and parts of your home and bringing some continuity and color in there. I know that I love to decorate and it's always fun and I love that Felicia suggests that you do something a little different every year. Don't get stuck into the same rut. So thank you so much, Felicia, for sharing your story with us. Um, you will always be my Bridget Jones story. Um, I just applaud you um, for your transformation and also for being such a great friend. And I'm going to direct, of course, everyone to our SippingOnStories.com website so that you can get further details and see um, links to Felicia's uh, designing site as well. And uh, YouTubers, check this out. Um, We had a lot of fun today, so it's always great to see the interaction back and forth between guests and myself. And I'm going to ask very, very at the end that you uh, hit that subscribe button if you like what you heard today. We are making a conscious effort to try to feature men and women from across different industries. So hopefully we're tapping into your story and helping it to resonate with you a little bit more. In the very end, we all have our own stories to tell. We wish here only for you to be as happy as you can in life. We want you to know that you are loved, that you are important, that your story matters. It really, really matters. Don't ever for a second in the midst of a pandemic or anything going on in the world think that you don't because you do. Uh, We hope that you will sip on every single um, momentous occasion, the challenges and the opportunities in life. Look forward to seeing you again next episode. Take care, everyone. And that's a wrap. 